Dr. Diver, for AML with a FLT3 mutation, what have we learned and what is currently being investigated? AML with the FLT3 mutation is very important from both prognostic and from therapeutic perspective. Prognostically, um, this is uh, considered to be one of the high risk mutations. It's also one of the most frequent mutations in AML seen in about 30 to 35 percent of younger and about 15 to 20 percent of older patients with AML. And these patients often have very proliferative disease, elevated white count, leukocytosis. Uh, and uh, without the addition of FLT3 inhibitors, there's a high risk of relapse um, and a short overall survival. Over the last 15 years, a number of targeted therapies called the FLT3 inhibitors have emerged. Uh, these started with the first generation FLT3 inhibitors, drugs such as Vestartinib and uh, Sarafenib. And now we have the second generation FLT3 inhibitors. This includes drugs like Giltritinib, Quizartinib, Cronolinib, which are more potent, specific, and better tolerated. The first study that showed that the incorporation of FLT3 inhibitors improved outcome was a study called the Ratify study. This was a frontline study looking at newly diagnosed FLT3 mutated younger patients where we added the FLT3 inhibitor mitostorin, which was the first generation FLT3 inhibitor to the standard induction chemo versus a placebo added to standard induction chemo, induction chemo being the standard of care approved at that time. And this showed that the addition of the FLT3 inhibitor to induction chemo did improve remission rates and overall survival as compared to induction chemo alone and led to the approval of the first FLT3 inhibitor mitostorin in the frontline setting. Uh, since then, also two other FLT3 inhibitors, second generation potent FLT3 inhibitors, drugs called giltritinib and quizartinib, uh, have also been evaluated. Giltritinib in the relapse setting, where single agent giltritinib has given 50 to 60% response rates uh, and has been extremely well tolerated and much better than any other salvage treatment in the FLT3 space that we have ever seen. And in the frontline setting, quizartinib, second generation potent FLT3 inhibitor, also, very recently, just a few months ago, there was data showing that the combination of uh, quizartinib with intensive chemotherapy improves survival as compared to intensive chemotherapy alone. And so we think quizartinib will be the third FLT3 inhibitor to get approved. So there's been a lot of progress um, overall in the FLT3 space. Um, and um, there are other uh, newer FLT3 inhibitors also in early clinical investigation that we think could eventually be uh, as potent or even better. The activation point related to this question is that um, FLT3 inhibitors have dramatically improved outcomes, both in the frontline setting when added to traditional backbone intensive chemotherapy, uh, as well as potentially lower intensity therapy, as well as in the relapsed refractory setting. And it is very important to know the status of the FLT3 mutation, both at diagnosis, to see if one would benefit by the addition of the FLT3 inhibitor to the frontline induction chemo as well as it relapsed, because this would open up the option for FLT3 inhibitor targeted therapies, uh, which would probably have the best chance of response and long-term outcomes. Mm -hmm.